Hello guys, hello. How are you today? I hope you are fine. Um, my name is Marita uh, Jaguar. Please um, subscribe if you haven't subscribed to my channel. Um, and please like my videos. You're most welcome. And today I'm going to be talking about uh, visas, spouse visa. Because the other day I started uh, by uh, talking about how to apply for a UK visa uh, step by step. But today I want to talk about and explain about how to apply for a spouse visa. So if you are a British citizen and you're settled in the UK, you can bring someone in the U from outside the UK. If you're, you have indefinite leave to remain visa, which is a permanent visa or an EU visa, you can bring someone in the U from, to the UK to settle. You can bring a spouse to settle. If you had married from abroad and left your wife and came to work here or the, your wife left you and, and came to work in the UK, you can apply for this visa. Okay. So, but there's something important that you need to note. You won't get the right to leave in the UK through marriage to a British citizen. So it's not automatic you have to go through stages and stages you need to apply for a spouse visa to you live in the uk um if you are eligible this this includes married people if you can show a certificate that you're married to this person you need to show uh, a certificate that you're married um or if you have a civil partnership or you are unmarried if you are unmarried that's fine you can apply for the same visa from abroad and coming to live in the UK. So you must meet eligibility criteria. You just don't come in just like that um, or meet someone and say, okay, I want to come to the UK tomorrow. It's not possible. You cannot just come and um, you will not be allowed. You have to apply and be accepted. Um, Sometimes it's difficult, like if you meet someone and you're on holiday and then you try to bring them in the UK. Sometimes it can be very, very difficult because you don't know the rules and regulations. They are very tight rules of bringing someone to the UK. It, it involves a lot of stages that you need to be aware of before you can bring someone to the UK. And that's why I say it is very important to listen to um, some of the things that I'll be talking about because most of these things involve um, someone bringing anyone to the UK. You can come first of all as a visitor, but you also need to apply. Even visitor's visa has to be applied. So it's not a matter of just coming to visit without it. And some countries can allow you up to one year uh, to come to come to the UK um, to visit. So let's say you have someone who um, who you met or you haven't met and you want to uh, you want them to come to the UK to meet up with you and you know get to know each other. That's where uh, this visa comes in and your you can come in and you know experience or meet up with your partner you know get to know each other before you actually go into partnership or before you sign up any papers that you are legally uh, married or in civil partnership so so it is very important uh, to know these things and also to be aware when uh, someone invites you to the UK. It's not just, there's a lot that has to be done. So what I was going to talk about today is um, basically a spouse, um, a visa and who can apply. So as a foreign national, you can apply for a UK visa a partner or a spouse visa as long as your partner 
is based in the UK. If your partner is British or Irish citizen, either by birth or naturalization, you can apply. Has settled in the UK and has indefinite leave to remain. Permanent residence or EU settlement status. You can also um, apply if uh, your partner has a refugee status or humanitarian protection in the UK or a Turkish businessman or person, man or woman, uh, a business person with a visa or Turkish worker visa. So if they have Turkish worker visa or business um, visa from Turkey, they can come, they, can, they are allowed to marry and, and live here. Um, you can bring your spouse to live here with you and then later on apply for indefinite uh, leave to remain. You're not coming here to live with your sister and then uh, you'll be seeing your, your spouse uh, maybe at the weekend. You must live together to show that you are actually actively um, gearing to getting married in the future and not just friendship or things like that. You are actually actively living together, sharing a bed, doing shopping, uh, cooking and doing all, all sorts of things that you, a man and woman, do together. So if you are not here already, those are the things that you should be expecting. But if you are here already, you should all already be living together and doing these things. And you will also need to provide evidence of your genuine and substantiating um, relationship. So it's not just, oh, we are living together, but my bills are in another address or I pay my water electricity in another place, not here. No, no, no. They should, you should have an address with bills written your name on them. So when you ask for proof of address, you should have a bill, something like a bank statement or a bill to prove that you are actually living here and you're living together. So be aware of these things. So UK spouse visa requirements are to make successful applicant for a UK partner and spouse visa, you will need to meet a set of eligibility criteria, like a genuine and eligible uh, relationship. You need to prove that you are actually genuine couple and you're not just, um, you know, people who have been introduced or uh, brought together for the sake of someone benefiting from somewhere. You know, there are people who get cash to sell other people to become UK citizens. So you need to be aware of these things. There are people there who will ask for money for you to become a UK citizen, but don't be lied to because it's very, very, uh, you can be jailed. It's not that easy. It's not like you cut bread and eat. It's more than that. Um, you and your partner combined gross income should be at least 18,600, uh, but this is set to rise up to 29,000 from the 11th of April, 2024. So we are in February now. So by April, bear in mind what is coming from 18,600 to 29,000 will be uh, followed by a gradual increase up to 38,700. So in the future, it could reach up to 38,700 and we don't know when. It could be in one year, it could be in, in five or 10 years, we don't know, but at the moment from April, you'll be able to pay 29,000. And that is that is now what you have to show combined gross income. If you're already living the, here in the UK, you have to show, you know, your bank statements must show that amount of money. Otherwise, you will not be qualified to apply for um, for spouse visa. Also, you you need to be having a suitable accommodation, like. Where are you living? Is it a suitable accommodation for a couple or is it uh, just a single person accommodation? So bear all these things in mind. 
if you meet um, the English language requirement. So this is another thing that you need to bear in mind. You need to do English, English language requirement for at least level A1 for your first visa application. This is your first visa application, A1 for your first visa. Um, so you will need also to show you are in, in a good relationship. If you are in civil partnership or marriage that is legally recognized in the UK or have been living together in a relationship for at least two years or plan to get married or enter in a civil partnership in the UK within six months of arriving in the UK. So you must arrive in the UK and then live six months together that you are planning to get married within that time. You know, not just come to married and then, oh, I want one year before I decide. No, you have to be ready to get married within six months. As such, they are always alert to the potential for sham marriages. They are aware of these things. They know that there are sham marriages out there and they want to protect everyone. They want to protect their own citizens. Um, anyone, even yourself, who may be dragged into sham marriages and then face, you know, lose a lot of money, they want to protect you from that, okay? Uh, so whereby applicants falsely state their false relationship when they are not. So be aware of these things that uh, they can occur, things like that can happen and then you get into trouble. If you are unsure you, you, whether you meet these requirements for genuine relationships, speak to a solicitor or immigration a lawyer or you know there are immigration solicitors who can also help you and advise you so if you're on a visa and you're not earning that kind of money you have to think carefully is this is this going to sustain me am i going to be refused visa you know if your husband is earning more than you the husband to be is earning more than you then you can combine and get to that amount if the applicant has children or additional children, every additional child must pay 3,800 per year. And um, that's the first child, 3,800 for the first child and an additional 2,400 for each subsequent child. So those are two children. Then this means that the minimum income for the applicant with two dependents children will be 24,000 uh, and for, for three children will be 27,200. So bear that in mind if you have children and you want to bring them with you or you are living here on visas, you should be earning that amount of money to be able to qualify incomes that are considered have to be income from um, self-employment or employment that is, that one is required pension of the applicant and or partner maternity allowance or bereavement maternity allowance or bereavement benefits received by the partner in the uk or any other income and savings specified by the applicant uh, or partner. Those are the, the places where the income should be coming from to be able to qualify for this. Um, you can also check in a visa financial requirements on the website of the UK government. Ex exemptions from meeting the financial requirements are available where a sponsor is receiving income. If they are receiving disability allowance, if they are receiving severe disablement allowance, or armed forces independent independence payments or guaranteed income payments under the armed forces compensation scheme or mobility supplement constant attendance allowance or war disablement pension scheme uh, people in the police injury pension are allowed industrial injury disablement benefit is also allowed and attendance allowance so also carers allowance uh, someone on carers allowance is also you know allowed this means that the sponsors will not need to show they earn 18,600 they don't need to show that they earn how much they earn 
Okay. Um, so uh, the other point is, as a partner and spouse visa applicant, you will need to show that you have sufficient knowledge of English language. This can be achieved in three stages if you haven't got it. So passing an English language test will meet the English language requirement if you pass a common European framework of reference for language English test from an approved testing center. This must be at least level A1 in speaking and writing. Okay. Um, the other thing is um, that is stage one that you know you need to pass. And if you wish to extend your stay in the UK at a later date, you will need to be able to pass at least. Uh, CEFR level A2, okay, English test from an approved uh, testing center uh, to show continuing improvement with the line with the time that you live, you have been in the country. Also, academic qualification, you will also meet, meet the English language requirement if you have a degree or other academic qualification which was taught in English, for example, if you've lived abroad and you have um, you you have done uh, English language, or you've earned a de degree which was done in English language, you can um, you you can show this as proof that you have actually you know you you have done it. So it's it's so easy is it and it can be it's doable and it can be done. Applicant must show they have suitable accommodation in the UK and that it is owned or occupied exclu exclusively by the applicant and their family members has sufficient, sufficient living space and meets any public health requirement. So it's not like bringing someone oh, to live in a little storage somewhere and tell them this is my bedroom or this is my house. No, 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 no. It must be understood that this is proper bedroom, this is proper house, and it has all the facilities for a house or to, to be lived in. Those are the things that you need to know and to follow. You will need to provide several documents with your visa application. This may include completed application form and application fee, valid passport, previous passports, evidence of your genuine and subs subsisting relationship, for example, shared bills, photographs, correspondences, messages, you need to show all that, that actually you've been living together and you are actually um, good with each other. You get on very well. You need to prove you meet the English language requirement, like I said, um, with a certificate. And you need two passport size requirements set by the UK, not just any photo you know, or photocopy, you have to have um, copies, but um, passport size photos that are in line with the requirements set by the UK government. You also need proof you meet the financial requirements, uh, for example, by bringing your bank statements, saving statements, which sleeps in migration application if any or details of any criminal convictions, if you've done any um, anything in the past, you need to show the criminal details. What did you do? Where did you go? How did you fight with someone? Did you, you kill? Did you steal? All those things. And anyone ever taken you to the police? And what was all that? You know, you need to show. The, and then the national insurance number, if you have one. If you haven't got one, you will, you will get one 
when you start working. And that's normally after six months. And then you need proof of accommodation in the UK, proof of accommodation, you know, like landlord letter or something like that. Yeah, like fingerprints and a digital photograph. Um, that's what you need. And then you need to show results of a, a tuberculosis from a country where you have taken a test. If you've taken a test uh, in another country, like in Africa, you need to come with a result and the certificate to show that you, you, are, you are not actually affected. If not, you will be required to take one. To ensure you receive a positive decision, decision on your partner or spouse visa application, it is essential that you provide all of the evidence and documentation required by the UKVI. Failure to provide all items in the correct format um, and properly translated when... Okay. So the application process for a UK partner and spouse visa, the application process for a UK partner and spouse visa is completed online in the, on the home office website the, applic the application steps are as follows check your el eligible complete online application pay the application fee upload any documents required to support your application arrange a biometric appointment to have your fingerprints and photo taken and attend an interview if invited if not invited you can follow up or you can find out why it, you have been refused but it is important that you do all you know in order checking eligibility do i qualify prepare the, the documents complete complete online application, all those things have to be done before, before you can be allowed, you know, even for an interview. So in the UK, visa application fee is 1048 in the UK. If you've been living in the UK, you pay 1048 pounds. But if you're living outside the UK, you pay 1846 pounds um to apply to come uh, for for the whole process that is the, the fee in 2020 this is 2024 other costs include immigration healthcare surcharge which is 1035 for each year from the 6th of february 2024 and biometric fee of 19 pounds and 20 pence will be required the there is also a charge of 1,000 if you if you need super priority service charge, um, even get it the next day. You know, if you spend money, you spend a thousand pounds, you can get uh, everything the next day. Um, also, you need to note this: after the initial period of two years and nine months, it is possible to further extend a partner and spouse visa for a further two years and six months. You must be the same, you must be in the same eligible relationship with your partner and you must apply before the current visa expires. Failure to that, you might not get it. Once you have resided in the UK for five years on your partner and spouse visa, you'll be able to applying you can remain permanently in the UK and will no longer be subject to immigration control. Um, so, so to gain this you will need to have lived in the UK for five years on a family visa or a partner visa or you need to have lived in your with your partner since you last renewed your visa and you also need to be in a genuine and subsisting relationship with your partner and also you need to you intend to continue your relationship you have to show you intend to continue your relationship after you apply for your indefinite leave not to apply and disappear and also meet the 
English language and life in the UK requirements and prove you have suitable accommodation and continue to meet the financial requirements. Okay, so what are reasons that you would be refused uh, the visa? There are several grounds on which applications for spouse partner may be refused. For example, the Secretary of State determines that the exclusion of applicant from the UK is inconducive to the public. The applicant is subject to a deportation order as of the date of application, or the exclusion of the applicant from the UK has been deemed conducive to the public good as a result of applicant's contact, character, or people. Be careful and without a reasonable, a reasonable doubt, the applicant failed to show up for, a, for an interview or, provide, or to provide specified information when asked or undergo a medical examination or even report when required to do so. It is undesirable to grant entry clear, clearance for medical reasons. Yeah. So you could also fail your medical test. You have not provided sufficient evidence of maintenance and accommodation. So you need everything to be correct and on point. Failure to that, you will not get it. You will not get it. Yeah. So if your partner or spouse has been refused entry I will share one of the immigration uh, solicitor that you can talk to. But nevertheless, you know, do not be quiet. You can take this further and seek uh, advice. Also, you can go back and correct where you went wrong and then start all over again. It's not like you, you cannot be given. Uh, it's not like um, it's a permanent thing. You can also reapply again and again. So for that, I think, um, you know, um, I've come to the end of, um, of the video. I, I do hope that you've enjoyed yourself and you've learned something from it and um, that, you know, you'll go ahead and submit your application. And for that, I say goodbye and see you again. Okay, take care of yourself and bye-bye for now. Please subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, please, 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 please. And I will see you soon, okay? Subscribe if you haven't subscribed. I will continue in, to share maybe some of the things that you need to know. I hope you've learned something. And uh, it's nice uh, to see you and, and to talk to you. Hope you have a wonderful time and I'll see you soon. Uh, you take care of yourself and I will see you soon. Okay, bye-bye now. Bye.